Hi, I'm going to be talking about the highly conjugated polymer, polyacetylene. I'm going to dig into its characteristics, its role in developing polymers with metallic properties, and some synthesis reactions for polyacetylene that I thought were interesting. So this polymer is commonly referred to as polyacetylene, since it comes from the acetylene monomer, but has also been known as polyethyne, since it comes from ethyne, which is the same thing as poly or acetylene. So while polyacetylene was known about before um, 1977, in 1977, Shirakawa developed uh, or found out that polyacetylene upon doping exhibits metallic conductivity. So this was the first moment that a organic polymer uh, exhibited um, properties of conductivity, and it was found by accident. So he accidentally added a thousand-fold increase in a catalyst of a, a zygonata catalyst and produced a silvery film rather than the typical black powder. Um, when he talked about this with Alan Heger and Alan McDermott, they figured out that by doping this film, they could produce a organic polymer capable of conducting electricity. Now, the three of them, Heger, McDermott, and Shirakawa, were recognized in 2000 or uh, in the year 2000 with the Nobel Prize for the discovery of um, polymers that conduct electricity. So it has been a goal for polymers to develop a organic material that was both plastic and or had properties of plastics as well as metals. Now or it was theorized that a, a pi system and specifically a conjugated double bonded system would be necessary to have a polymer that conducted electricity, but it was also found not sufficient since earlier tests indicated that highly conjugated polymers did not necessarily have high conductivity. So this observation with polyacetylene showed that it was possible to have an organic polymer that could conduct electricity. And this opened a field of new research in creating polymers with metallic-like properties. Um, so there's a podcast on Chemistry World on polyacetylene that recounts the story in more detail to how this, this creation happened. It's only six minutes and highly encouraged. Now, before doping, polyacetylene is not a conductor, but an insulator, as most polymers are. When upon doping, though, it can be elevated all the way to um, the position of a conductor, which is exciting. It rivals uh, other good conductors like copper and silver. However, there's some big issues why we don't use polyacetylene instead of copper and silver, and that's mainly because of the solubility and reactivity of polyacetylene. Uh, it is well known that um, polyacetylene is not processable uh, because there are strong intermolecular forces as well as the regular structure to this polymer chain that results in a high degree of crystallinity as well as insolubility in most solvents. Um, since it can't be put in most solvents or function uh, or behave nicely in a melt, it becomes impractical for commercial use since it can't be processed. The reactivity is an issue as well in the sense that it can't be used anywhere but a controlled environment. It often will react with the air and moisture um, upon doping, and the doping will, uh, the effect will decrease. So there is an overarching stereochemistry to the polyacetylene polymer um, that depends on the double bonds. Right? You can either have cis or trans for each of these double bonds, but there are different structures um, since these double bonds are conjugated. Uh, you can see in A that we have a cis transoid. Um, polymer. This is typically an insulating polymer, uh, as most other polymers are. And then we also have two forms for trans polymers, where for B and C. Um, so even though A and B have similar structures overall, they do not show all of the same characteristics. Um, now, cis polymers are generally referred to as um, polymers with over 88% cis content, but uh, it's very typical for the polymer to have regular structure overall. Um, if there were to be a quick change in the polymer chain, there would be a um, um, there would be unpaired electrons, or I have read that there would be unpaired electrons at the points of structural alteration, um, therefore deterring any kind of structural alteration. Uh, in general, though, the conductive polymers are um, polyacetylene that has been doped, though. So these, it's 
if polyacetylene is doped, the uh, conjugated bonds will let the polymer uh, or let the electrons move along the polymer chain. Now, this is the primary route for the polymerization of acetylene to polyacetylene. Uh, it's by the use of a Ziegler Nata catalyst. This was the route that Shirakawa used uh, when developing the um, conductive polymer. So the exact method for ziegler nata systems is not fully known. Uh, it's, it could happen via metastasis or a monomer insertion. Um, but what we do see is that there are open sites on the, the metal catalyst, this, this catalyst that we're using, and the monomer, in this case the acetylene, will become coordinated to that metal. And upon a cis addition, the triple bond will open up to insert itself between that metal as well as the alkyl group growing off, so that the chain. Um, and this will happen over and over and over. You can see both the initiation um, and the polymerization through this process. Now, in the case of polyacetylene with the ziegler nata catalyst, we see that there is a favor for the cis addition. We don't have a trans opening of this triple bond. Um, we get a cis polyacetylene off of this catalyst. But how do we still form the, the trans polyacetylene? That happens through an isomerization of the double bond, and that occurs at elevated temperatures. So what we see is that it's not the polymer structure or the, uh, uh, it's not that the, poly the polymer structure does not depend on the tin and or titanium and aluminum ratios in this catalyst, but rather depends on the reaction temperature. So at elevated temperatures, the isomerization of the double bond from cis to trans is more likely, um, resulting in a higher percentage of trans or a higher percentage of trans bonds in the polyacetylene. This also indicates that the polyacetylene for a cis polyacetylene must kept at low temperatures. Now, polyacetylene can be formed from a ROMP uh, mechanism. So when you polymerize a polymer or the monomer as uh, shown at the top left, and I will spare you from saying that full name, but when you polymerize that molecule by ROMP, you get a polymer with um, a another cyclic ring uh, or another uh, bicyclic ring off of the backbone chain. Now, this is a pre-polymer that is soluble um, and can be processed in the liquid. Uh, it can also be evaluated. It gives a high molecular weight for the polymer, um, so we're getting good conversion. However, um, upon heating in a reverse Diels-Alder reaction, we can, uh, or Diels-Alder uh, mechanism, we can get the elimination of a benzene-like um, byproduct to create a polyacetylene um, polymer. So, Now this, this strategy, known as the Durham route, uh, to make polyacetylene is an interesting alternative to the Shirakawa route, which the uh, ziegler nata catalyst, um, and it gives an interesting way to um, um, have more control in um, the polymerization of acetylene. So there are all alternative ROMP uh, synthesis reactions for polyacetylene other than um, the one shown on the last slide that don't produce a byproduct. So we have here one example is uh, benzvaline. Now benzvaline is an isomer of benzene and as you could predict it is not very stable but upon uh, a ROMP polymerization it'll form a polymer that um, is uh, not very stable and will become polyacetylene. Now the the cool thing with this polymerization process is it doesn't have any side reactions um, or uh, any elimination product. Uh, we can also polymerize uh, via ROMP mechanism cyclooctatetraene, and that again creates polyacetylene, but it has the same issues as normal polyacetylene. Um, however, with this mechanism, uh, we can see that we can substitute these, this cyclooctatetraene so that we um, can make a substituted polyacetylene. Now this makes the the polymer soluble and um, also makes backbiting processes in the ROMP less likely. However, uh, it has been shown that these substituents reduce the connectivity of this, uh, uh, this polymer that we produce. 
Now to make these conjugated polymers conductive to electricity, there are two um, different doping techniques that we can use. We have p-type doping. This uses halogens, halogens or oxidative agents to create an electron hole by abstracting an electron from that pi bond system. Uh, it creates a uh, polaron or a radical cation. Um, the typical oxidative agent or the halogen that we use is iodine and it forms an I3 uh, anion. Um, this generates a positive, char uh, positive charge along the polymer backbone with uh, negatively charged cations. The other technique that we have is n-type doping, and this uses alkali metals or reductive agents to add another electron to the backbone. Uh, this generates a negative charge that's uh, balanced by cations in the system. Now, we need lots of doping to make these charges mobile. Um, otherwise, they will generally stay where they are. Uh, and this doping can be switched off by pulling or pushing the, the counter ions that we used as the dopants, the dopants, um, into the polymer and away from the polymer, allowing us to turn on and turn off the uh, conductivity of the polymer chain. So while polyacetylene doesn't necessarily have commercial use, it was the first organic polymer with metallic properties and then inspired other polymers to uh, with these metallic properties to be used in um, commercial applications. So uh, these conductive polymers can be used or it would be helpful to be used in corrosion inhibiting coatings uh, as well as lots of electronics and the the plastic nature of these polymers or the uh, the flexibility associated with these polymers um, makes them very useful for flexible uses in circuit boards as well as display screens. So two of the polymers that have such potential uses uh, or are showing good potential are uh, polyphenylene vinylene and polyaniline shown to the right. Now these are my sources. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can. Uh, that's the first source up at the top. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed digging into polyacetylene. Thank you.